Welcome to Open for Business, the Gallatin Valley's only local business and consumer talk show featuring Tom Eaglehoff, the Man Entrepreneur Magazine Radio called the leading authority in the United States for doing business in small town. Here he is, speaker, author, small business consultant, and Mrs. Eaglehoff's favorite son, Tom Eaglehoff. All right, welcome everyone. Open for business. We air every uh, Saturday live from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Mountain Time on AM 1450 KMMS in Bozeman, 1340 KPRK in Livingston, Montana. If you'd like to be a part of the big broadcast, go to KMMSAM.com and click Listen Live. The call-in number during the show, 406-522-TALK, 406-522-8255. I'm here, you're here. Let's get the show on the road. All right, welcome back. 56 degrees outside. It's Saturday, March 5th, 2016, uh, 25 minutes before the top of the hour. I want to welcome you to the podcast portion of Open for Business. Uh, Each week I share some tips and tricks I've learned over the years about advertising, marketing, promotion, and building strong, successful businesses. Do these Open for Business podcasts uh, live every Saturday between 1130 and noon, Mountain Time from the studios of AM 1450 KMMS in Bozeman, 1340 KPRK in Livingston, and of course, streaming on the World Wide Web at KMMSAM.com. If you missed any of the previous podcasts, you'll find them on my YouTube channel or my website at smalltownmarketing.com. That's smalltownmarketing.com. Just go about halfway down the page on the left side, and you'll find a link to the podcast so you can catch up on any of my podcasts that you might have missed. On today's topic, we're going to talk about telephone sales. We're going to talk about how to sell on the phone. So uh, with the Internet, instant, instant messaging, uh, social media, email, FedEx uh, uh, are the principal tools for many uh, businesses, both large and small. But the most used tool by far is still the phone. And a great number of small town uh, customers let their fingers do the walking when they look for your business. They'll look you up on uh, their cell phone. They'll look you up on your their tablet or whatever. So it's critical that you understand how important the phone is and how to use it to its full potential in your business. So the phone is conversation and communication. The first rule of using the phone is to realize that you're having a conversation with somebody. Uh, When you meet a friend on the street, uh, you don't talk to them the same way you talk to them on the phone, but you should. Most people would say they don't talk uh, to people they meet on the street. So you're having a face-to-face conversation with someone when you're on the street. So you're, you're smiling as you're talking, uh, so smile when you talk on the phone. Pretend they're right there in the room with you. And the second rule of using the phone is that the person asking the questions in any conversation is always in control of that conversation. So if the customer is asking the questions, they're in control. They have you on the defensive. You can't sell effectively until you gain control. So the third rule of using the phone is to understand that it is physically and emotionally impossible to be polite and courteous and aggressive and pushy at the same time. So you're either one or the other. You can't be polite and courteous at work if you're naturally aggressive and pushy at home. So your job is discovering your customer's needs. And if you're going to purchase a car, would you just pick up or pick a dealer and uh, call them up and ask, hey, how much are cars today? Probably not. Why would you do that? Well, because there's a lot of information you don't know. So here's some of the questions the car dealer might need to know the answers to. Uh, Do you want a midsize, a compact? Uh, compact luxury car color brand name Uh, you need a car a four-wheeler a minivan an suv two-door four-door hatchback what accessories do you need would i have the car in stock do you need a special order Uh, is it new or used Uh, available financing and yes you might even want to know the price so Notice that price was not the number one question on the list because price is only a perception of of received value. So if I were to ask you how much is a car, you would have a hard time coming up with a price until you had more information about what kind of car it is. So you can't give information if you don't have information. So the salesperson uh, on the phone should be responsible for a variety of information, customer service, product sales, product promotions, uh, accuracy of order or customer information, along with courtesy and uh, diplomacy. So here are some areas your phone people need to be trained to do. Obviously, they need to be trained to take sales orders. They need to answer inquiries about merchandise and services and dates of delivery or service scheduling, follow-ups or service calls. What about policies, uh, returns and exchanges of goods and services? They also need to handle complaints. 
and do customer service, price adjustments, follow-up calls, replacement merchandise, any of those things. So in order to be effective, phone salespeople must be familiar with all departments and products the company offers. Some things the salesperson might need to know are current copies of all current marketing and advertising promotions and ads. They also need copies of competitors' ads so they can match offers if that's your policy. Uh, order, shipping, credit card uh, info, uh, calculator, scratch pads, pricing guides, uh, product or service availability and schedules. They need to know company policies and any uh, legal disclaimers uh, that have to be uh, given to customers. So let's talk about the steps to the sale on the phone. Uh, the first step, of course, is the introduction. So when you answer the phone, you give the company name, your name. Uh, good morning, uh, Smith Realty, Mr. Anderson speaking. Uh, remember, this is your first impression with a customer. This is one single area is very important, and I should be able to tell if you're smiling on the other end of the phone or not. The customer may decide whether or not to do business based on how they're treated when they call your company. Next thing you need to do is find a need. So you want to ask open-ended questions. Open-ended questions are questions that can't be answered by a yes or no. Let the customer talk as much as they want without interruption. Remember, the person asking the questions is always in control of the conversation. So what are they asking for? Have they done this before? Uh, what did they like about their last experience? What didn't they like? What was the level of service received? Each product or service should have a group of questions that are commonly asked. So brainstorm with each other for answers to these questions without losing control of the conversation. Next, we've got to make recommendations and or upselling. So as with our car analogy, you can't recommend a car without asking a few questions. So to present the product, you might say something like, based on what you told me about the car that you want, here's what I recommend. As an upsell, I've had several people add this item to this package. The next part is overcoming objections, and an objection is really not an objection. It's a request for more information. The point, keep in mind, is that there are only two kinds of objections. There are valid objections. For example, I'm a size 18, and this is a size 6, is a valid objection. An invalid objection, the most common is, it costs too much, or, well, it sounds good, but I think I need to think about it before I spend that much. Well, in most cases, those are not valid objections. If they couldn't afford it, why bother looking? So what they're really saying is, you haven't showed me enough benefits to justify your asking price. And if they really and truly can't afford it, then they're not a valid customer anyway. You haven't lost anything. If they can't buy from you, they can't buy from your competition either. Last but not least, the most important part of selling on the phone is closing the sale. First rule of selling anything, when logic and emotion come into conflict, emotion always wins. So if you think customers are going to sit down and make logical comparisons of the merits of your product or service against your competitor, you're mistaken. They'll purchase on emotion and they'll create a logical argument to justify their decision. So remember in the fact-finding session, this is where you show the benefits of the items they said they wanted. No one wants a one-inch drill bit. They want the benefit that the one-inch drill bit will give them. They want the one-inch hole. As a result, price is seldom an issue. So it is usually a defensive excuse or an invalid uh, objection. People buy benefits, and benefits are almost always emotional. Benefits give a feeling of well-being, and well-being is an emotional feeling. So the second rule of selling anything on the phone, you've got to ask for the order. The reason most given by people for not buying is no one asked me to. An easy way to do this is to ask if you have your credit card handy, I can start processing your request. Or you might say we deliver on Tuesday or Thursday, which would work best for you. So if they answer Tuesday, you've made the sale. You've closed that sale. Now, some do's and don'ts on the phone. you got to have a pleasant and, sin and sincere positive voice. Have a smile on your face as you talk on the phone. Work on your vocabulary. Remember, you're on the phone. You have to create a positive mental picture in the customer's mind of your product or service. Synchronize your rate of speech with the rate of speech to the person whom you're speaking. Don't talk too fast or too slowly. Relax while the customer is talking. Take a deep breath, smile, and wait till it's your turn to talk. If you're, ta if you're calling them, ask if it's a convenient time for them to talk. They may be busy. It might be better to call at another time when they'd be more receptive. Make your conversation brief, easy to understand, and stay on the point. Make sure you have all the information in front of you to handle your customers' questions. If you have to put them on hold, you might lose them. 
So don't ask anyone to place a return call for you unless you're ready to take that call and talk to the customer. The person on the other end of the line is busy too. And don't do all the talking. Give the person on the other end an opportunity to answer you, to ask questions, or make comments. Never interrupt your customer. Be a courteous voice-to-voice as you would be face-to-face. And some final thoughts about selling on the phone. The phone is instant communication. There's no waiting for it to boot up. Uh, Many customers are calling on an impulse. They have developed a sudden need, and they want that need filled. You have a great opportunity to bring additional revenue to your business. So people buy where they feel comfortable and appreciated. So give them that feeling when they call. It's just common courtesy, and that's the podcast. Each week, I share some tips and tricks I've learned over the years about advertising, marketing, promotion, and building successful businesses. I do these Open for Business business podcasts every Saturday live from the studios of AM 1450 KMS in Bozeman, 1340 KPRK in Livingston, and of course, streaming on the World Wide Web at KMMSAM.com. So if you missed any of the previous podcasts, you'll find them on my YouTube channel or my website at smalltownmarketing.com, smalltownmarketing.com. Go about halfway down the home page on the left side, and you'll find a link to the podcast page so you can check out any you might have missed. So tune in each Saturday, and let's build successful businesses together. 